So I'm Uncle Steph, and I'm a little pissed off about student loan debt. So the student loan debt story is more or less an American thing, where you get these young students wanting to go to college, so they go into debt. And you have them taking on huge responsibilities debt-wise when they're barely able to understand finance if they know anything at all. You know, most people have very weak financial skills, so let alone 17, 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Having young students make these crucial and lifelong impacting financial decisions is immoral at best. I think it's immoral at best. And it kind of ticks me off that they're put into these strange situations. What's really crazy is that in a lot of the states in the U.S., they can't even drink until they're 21. But on the flip side, they could take on these enormous, life-changing, for the bad, debts, student loan debts, that are non-dischargeable through bankruptcy. Sure, that's okay, but no, no, you can't have a beer. So let me unpack that just a little. What's a non-dischargeable debt? A non-dischargeable debt is a debt that you cannot get rid of through bankruptcy. You see, if I start a company, and let's say I rack up two, three, four, five million dollars in debt, or two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in debt in this business, in two, three, four years later, whatever it is, it goes bankrupt, goes tits up. I can just go bankrupt, boom, boom. I think it's chapter 11 in the U.S. And Bob's your uncle. You have no more debt in seven months. You're ready to go. You can't do that with student loan debt. You can't do that with student loan debt. You rack up the student loan debt, and it's with you for life. It is a type of modern-day debt slavery. So some people might be saying, how could you say it's debt slavery, stuff? Isn't that a little bit exaggerated? No, it's actually pretty accurate. You see, let's say you go to school and you rack up a bunch of debt and you say, ah, I'm not sure what I want to do. So you go into the arts and then you say, oh, I'm study a little philosophy. And then you go, ah, I'm going to go into psychology. And you, after a year, you go, I don't like that. I'm going to get into basket weaving or whatever. And what happens year after year, you're taking out more and more loans and all these loans are deferred, as far as I understand, until you get out of school. So you don't feel the pain of these debts immediately, which is not a good thing. And what happens, you come out of school four years later, or five years later, whatever it is. Now, if you're lucky and you've done well, you've got a legal degree maybe, or you're a dentist or you're a doctor, then fine. You've racked up the debt, but you're going to be making a lot of money, you're going to pay off the debt. For a lot of people, and the statistics are very, very, very high and very damaging, they come out with big student loan debts that don't align with the value of the job that they can get. So what I mean, the value of the debt does not equal to the value of the job, meaning if you run a $100,000 debt, student loan debt, and your job is only going to pay you $50,000 a year, it's pretty questionable. I've seen much worse. I've been watching people on the web talking about their student loan debt. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty disastrous. On the other hand, if you had a job where you're being paid you know, $300,000 a year and you have $300,000 in debt, no big deal. All I'm saying is that the student loan debt should align with the compensation that you can get in said job. So if the student loan, or excuse me, if the degree will cost you 100 grand, and if you're making 100 grand a year, 150,000 a year, then that's acceptable, I suppose. But a lot of people end up doing two, three, four years, and they come out with a useless degree, a degree that's really not worth much financially, and then they got this debt hanging over them. So I'm watching these videos of all these people where they have big student loan debt that's been lingering with them for 10 years, 20 years, some 30 years. And they just keep growing and growing and growing. And it's not something they can get rid of through bankruptcy. Anyway, if you're going to take away anything from this video, is don't get student loan debts. Before you think about taking on student loans, first of all, you better be super con convicted 
convicted. You better have super, super conviction, rather, vis-a-vis -vis the degree that you are going after. Before you take on a debt to go to a particular program in university, check out the job opportunities in that particular area. Check out the job opportunities. What is the average salary that somebody is making in that specialization? So if you're taking on debt in, I don't know, to become a sociologist, what are the probabilities of you getting a job? Look that up. And what is the average salary? Look that up. Don't just talk to one or two people. Start doing your research. Listen, you're going into a very heavy thing here, student loan debt. Potentially life-changing for the worse also be covered better, but a lot of times for the worse. So it's worth spending a few weeks studying this, calling up places. Hey, what are the chances you hire a psychologist? Talk to a bunch of psychologists, assuming you want to get into psychology for this example. Find out. Investigate. Check. Why not? It's worth it, right? This is your life. I have to tell you, I have a personal pet peeve of this. I'm going to go way back, way back in the day uh, when I was a young whippersnapper. Still had all my hair. And I was in uh, college. Well, we call it a college up here in Canada, but it's kind of like grade 13. And I was, applying, I was applying to get into some universities. I wanted to get into business administration. So I started applying, and they had uh, requirements that made no sense to me. And the requirement was that you had to know Cal 2, Calculus 2, to get into business administration. Now I come from a family of entrepreneurs, uh, all my parents, all my parents, both my parents, and uh, I can tell you, and now I've been an entrepreneur all my life, uh, calculus one or two or trigonometry and all this kind of stuff, all these requirements that they had to get into uh, business school were false. They had nothing to do with business, you know, nothing to do with it. They were fake requirements put out there because some teacher wanted to teach Cal 2. That's it, and they wanted to sell a classroom. So that in itself used to really tick me off, right? Like, why are we forcing people to do these useless courses when they don't really have an impact? Uh, they have nothing to do with business, for example. So remember, when you're going to these schools, um, you're paying a lot of times to, uh, to finance the schools. There's a lot of uh, courses in there. They'll argue, well, oh, it's helping your mind. Well, you can help your mind in other practical ways. So for example, I teach coding and development. I get people into the game as quickly as possible. I want them to become developers as quickly as possible. Why? Because that's where you learn to write code. The analogy I like to make is a boxing. I used to box, not professionally, but I used to do a lot of boxing. I used to be in the ring all the time. And there's two groups of people in the boxing gym. The pad hitters, the people who would just hit the pads and work the heavy bags and do drills. And the people who would get in the ring. The pad hitters didn't like getting in the ring because they didn't want to get hit, and that's okay. But you're not going to learn to box. Now, you can fool yourself and think you're going to learn to box, but you're not. Sometimes these pad hitters, they get really good at hitting the pads. They look amazing. look like, wow, these guys are amazing. But then I've seen the pad hitters. Every single time a pad hitter would get into the ring, they get totally destroyed. Totally destroyed. Uh, same thing with so many other professions. In coding... You want to get somebody into the ring, if you will, and start building real things. Because what they discover is what makes a great coder is not whether they know React or Node or whether they know Python or Django or whatever technology or languages you want to pick. What makes a coder or a developer is somebody who can actually take a problem that needs to be solved. They're able to build complex systems. They know how to plan them out how to segment them into smaller components, and they're able to take developer skills, which is basically about breaking down complex problems, organizing them into an efficient system, and then creating and writing the components that make up the software. That's what a coder does. They solve problems, they break down complexity, and they're not married to any particular technology. Technologies are just tools. So sometimes you'd use React, sometimes you'd use Node, Sometimes you use Python. It depends what you're doing. Sometimes C++. Anyhow, I digress. Yes, before you get into student loan debt, think many, many times about look at the local job markets. 
look at the probability. What are the probabilities that you're going to land that high-paying job in that particular area that you're going to get into? Try to figure out the value of the degree before you jump into it. And if you decide to jump into it, my suggestion to you is to work really hard on side jobs, side gigs, and don't rack up any student loan debt. Don't do it. It is debt slavery potentially for you. And I see all these sad stories of people who have these lifelong debts. I think it's immoral that they were put onto them. I'm not going to get into what the solutions are for the people who are already trapped in these situations. But um, I think personally, being a business guy, I think those who profited off of this, maybe they should uh, be the ones who have to rectify the situations as opposed to some random people had nothing to do with it. Do you learn anything from this video? Do not get into student loan debt. Evaluate the value of the degree or the profession you're going to jump into. S determine whether or not that degree is worth the time investment and the dollar investment. Remember, if you go to college for three years, four years, that's three, four years, you're not making money. On the flip side, I mentor people in software development as the foundation to my mentoring program because it's so valuable. It's a true meritocracy in that if you can demonstrate skills, you will get the high paying job because demand still outstrips the supply by a big deal. What does that mean? There's a lot more developer jobs out there than there are decent and well-trained developers. So become a decent, a decent and well-trained developer. How do you do that? Write lots of code, build lots of projects. Anyhow, that's for another video. I hope you found this useful. A little fired up about the whole student loan thing. I think it's a, one of the immoral, immoral aspects of society to trap kids, essentially, into these lifelong, pernicious, debt slavery situations. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics of it, uh, uh, who's responsible. Parents should be stepping in. But again, our educational system, uh, I... If, I, have, you know, I work with a lot of schools and a lot of great people in the, in the schools, for sure, but they've really hurt people a lot by not helping to understand some of the basic things in life, like finance, right? Finance, critical thinking, uh, that sort of thing. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a trillion something in student loan debt in the U.S. There wouldn't be these massive credit card debts if people were, were trained and they understood money, they understand, understood these decisions in the medium and long term. Very important. So... That's about it. Ciao.